what's up, Unrested here, and uh, I want to start off this video just by saying thanks so much for your feedback on the walk and talk videos. Everybody gave me just tons of positive feedback, they're like, yeah, we love it if you mix it up with walk and talk, which, guys, man, that makes recording so much easier, you have no idea. I mean, it's the one chance I get out of my house and there's not a lot of background noise, not that I don't love my children, but they do make it sometimes very hard to record. Um, so thank you. I just wanted to say that before I started this off. If you don't know what JFAC is, it's Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Questions people write in about, send me articles about, or generally have questions about moving here, etc. I'm unrested with the questions you requested. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be reading a viewer's mail here, so if I don't look at the camera, I apologize. Um, it's not because I'm trying to avoid looking at you, the wonderful viewer. It's because I'm trying to read the message as I walk and be safe and not get hit by cars or people on bikes. Um, I'm not going to say their name and I'm not going to say where they're going to be working at. Um, they have listed, listed both of those things in the message, but I feel it's, it's best just to keep that kind of under wrap. But they are moving to Japan here to start work here and they had a few really good questions. Um, sounds like they really did their research. Okay, hello Scott, I hope this message finds you in the best of circumstances. I have been watching your videos and just subscribed to your channel, thank you. Uh, it's very informative and objective as you tackle both positive and negative aspects. I haven't watched all the videos, you shouldn't. Uh, it's like 800 videos, I don't expect anybody to watch those. <laughs> um, except for the dark sides of Japan. I watched, I binge watched that yesterday. Uh, what brought me to your channel was I was researching what life is like as a female artist in Japan. Uh, I did watch some of your, some of Heia Designs YouTube channel. I don't know Heia Designs. I probably should know more YouTube channels that are in Japan. That's bad of me. Shame on me. Um, and let's see what else does it say here. Sorry, I just want to get my positioning right as I walk. Um, I took some notes and some of her pointers. I noticed you have something in common with her in that you both stated you have done teaching and eventually followed your passions into art. Anyway, I do apologize for the long message and do excuse my English. Your English is fine. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I don't think I have any problem with this English. In fact, I thought it was uh, native level when I read it. I know I suck at it. It's not my native language. I wrote to you because uh, the company I am working for now is planning to send me to Japan. Uh, I will work as a, well, I'm just going to say they're going to work as an artist. I'm not going to say what their exact job is. Um, their HQ is going to be located in, I'm going to leave that out. Uh, so they are, but it's a place in Japan, let's put it that way. Um, it's actually a place that's pretty close to me, so I know about this area. Um, I feel confident enough to talk about this area in Japan. Um, if it was Tokyo, I, I wouldn't. Okay, enough, enough, enough side talk. Let me get back into this. Um, they're planning on sending us, me and another artist, and a few programmers. Um, our Japanese boss says they want to be exposed. They want us to be exposed and assimilate as to how to do things in Japan. Makes sense. I understand that. Um, while I do agree that it is great to have this opportunity and learn. I really am grateful, but I can't help but feeling anxious, especially since I've heard a lot of negative things about working there. Well, that's understandable, at least you've done your research. Also, in one of Hayashi Design's videos, she talks about the Kohai Senpai relationship. If you guys don't know what Kohai Senpai is, um, it is, Senpai is your, kind of your, your leader, your trainer, whatever you want to call it. And hold on just a second, I'm going to pass a generator that's really loud. Let me just get past this. Wow, that's not the most annoying thing to you. Okay, senpai is usually your... Not necessarily the person who hired you, but the person who's going to train you. Someone who's a veteran at the company. Uh, as a kohai, that is your position. It's pretty much like master and the apprentice, okay? Though I wouldn't say 100% of the time your senpai is a master at what they do. I've had some bad senpais before, I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, okay, she talks about Kohai senpai relationship in the company and the Sabisu Zangyo uh, service over time and Aisatsu. Now, Aisatsu, she's just written in Romaji, so I'm not sure if she means uh, just like Aisatsu, like introduction. 
um, which means you would make an Aisatsu, an introduction, or a Jiko Shokai, which would be an introduction. You come into the company, you tell a little bit about yourself. You don't have to get too personal, you don't have to do too much, but you know, you just kind of be friendly and introduce yourself to everybody. I can do the Aisatsu, no problem. So the problem is with the overtime, however. Yes, overtime in Japan can be brutal. Um, I don't know, but okay, so here's the thing. Right away she's worried about the overtime and she has every right to be worried about the overtime. Um, sometimes that can be really bad in Japan, but a lot of times, a lot of these companies, they know we come from countries where overtime to the point of like being ridiculous, like past eight hours, um, is usually not done in most of these countries, so they don't expect it from people coming from these countries. Uh, whereas the mentality in Japan is kind of like until your boss goes home, you don't go home so Because they know most most gaijin don't come with this uh, sort of I guess tradition or culture or Something that uh, is found in their type of work or their job no matter even if it's you know the the exact uh, type of work in the other country for example even if they're doing art in Japan and you come over there to also do art in Japan they still won't expect you to follow that so maybe maybe but I have heard some companies do so uh, yeah that is that is a, a definitely a, a legit worry I did that before I used to pull all-nighters back when I would work at a TV station and I would stay at the office for three days without going home. It sounds like you got a great work ethic, so that's good. Um, what else does it say here? But it's project-based and I was well compensated. So pretty much what they mean is it's kind of like um, if you do project-based work in video games, for example, if you were a QA tester or a programmer, uh, pretty much for six, five to six months, and I know this because I used to work for EA Sports, um, you would pretty much be in there doing work around the clock for a couple of days when you hit uh, near the end or the deadline status and then usually you'd be given a ton of time off and you would have made a huge amount of money that you were compensated by that would allow you to take that time off and really recover uh, whereas in Japan you might do this kind of stuff and just keep continuing to have to do this kind of stuff stay you know three days or three nights at a time Okay, so I don't know uh, about doing free overtime. Yes, free overtime, that's right. Japan usually doesn't pay you for overtime. Plus, the part where... Sorry, it's so tiny here to read. It's, it's, hold on, I gotta make it bigger. It's getting really hard to read here. Okay. Uh, let's see, plus the overtime uh, part where... You get looked down upon if you take a sick day, which is possible. I mean, if they're going to have you work really long hours, you may get sick anyway, right? Yep, that's, that's pretty possible. And this is why things like karoshi, death from overwork, exist in Japan. Anyway, in your experience working there, maybe you had... Maybe you had stay and do really long work. Uh, I've had times like that, but... It was kind of like your situation where you talk about it's a project thing and uh, you had to, time to recover in between projects. My concern is would they ostracize you if you do not stay the long hours? Um, there is the possibility of that. I mean, if you do find out this is the way your company is gonna operate, I highly suggest not taking the job. Um, I guess whether or not you can find this stuff out would be really hard depending on um, if the company has a culture that's very open to uh, talking about their experiences or if that is even a taboo thing to ask and receive information as to how the company works or cooperates with its employees. Give me just a second here, I'm going to take my cart out and go through the gate to get into the subway. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Gotta just do my pita Picard. That's, that's what I used to get into the subway. In case you guys are wondering. Okay, we've got a lot of background noise, but that's what people said they like about these kind of videos. Anyway, let's continue on. All right. So, um, also she mentioned the difference between working in Japan as an English teacher and as a graphic designer, the latter which would had 
given her a normal perspective of how things really are. I know that your situation could be different, as you have mentioned that you run your own company. So anyway, what frustrating things did you encounter about clients or coworkers? I guess, okay, so one of the biggest problems that you're gonna encounter um, is probably miscommunication. And uh, I think that's pretty much across the board. Anybody and everybody can expect to experience a little bit of miscommunication, either um, they think they've said one thing in English or you think they've said one thing in Japanese and you totally miscommunicate that. And as you know, with experiences with art, uh, that can be a problem because of course when that happens, you'll have to either redo the art or make fixes to the art or change it for whatever executive or company I guess art director is unhappy with what you've uh, done for them. Okay. Let me just stop here for a second and read you the last little bit before I finish up. Last but not least, there was one video Hayashi Design had about having thick skin. Apparently her being slightly overweight is affecting her employee evaluation. evaluation sorry. Well, personally, I don't worry about my BMI. It's just that some of the people coming with me are a little bit overweight. One of them girl even has this condition she's had all her life for being overweight. So if the weight discrimination were true, maybe I should warn them to have thick skin? Well, that's most of my questions. Thank you for taking the time to read, and I look forward to any advice you can give. I hope I don't sound too negative. No, you don't. You don't sound too negative. You sound like someone who did the research. So let me uh, put away the other phone so I can just walk and talk and answer that last part. So having thick skin uh, while you uh, take maybe evaluations on your weight in Japan. Yeah. Japan can be harsh about being overweight. Um, why is kind of a reason that once I explain it, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, I have seen Japanese people be extremely harsh with being overweight, um, as in being blunt to the point of saying, hey, you're fat. Um, not to me personally, because I, I think I'm, I'm a decent weight, right guys? <laughs> um, so the reason for this is not because the Japanese want to be <laughs> cruel or harsh or, you know, I guess rip on you for being a little bit overweight. It's because here in Japan, they take weight very serious um, to the point that they see it as being sick if you are overweight. Now, whether or not I agree with this is not the point. Um, personally, I really don't mind anyone being overweight. Uh, I don't always think it's a bad thing. In fact, for some girls it actually looks quite good um, but for Japan they see it as a problem as far as metabo syndrome which is metabolic syndrome or what we would just call like getting diabetes or being overweight to the point of it affecting your heart um, and they worry about you in that sense they don't worry about you in a sense of like hey how can I rip into you so I can make you lose some weight they think about you in the sense of oh my goodness you're sick I gotta help you out by telling you you're overweight because you haven't noticed and hopefully that'll get your weight under control, help your heart, help your dieting, and help your overall health. Um, this doesn't always translate well, number one, because, number one, they're telling you in a, in a language that isn't their native language. If they tell you in English, hey, you're fat, hey, you're overweight, um, it's because they maybe they don't know a delicate way to do it. Um, for example, okay, let me put it this way. Sometimes when I've talked to someone in Japanese and asked them a question... Jesus Christ. Ugh. Really rude, bunch of rude people. Um, so, when I've asked a question before in Japanese and gotten a very, very quick answer that is just no. They'll just be like, no. Um, and it's not because they're trying to be harsh or blunt or just give me a rude answer. It's because they don't know any other way to just say, no, that's not right or that's not correct or um, actually, here's what you want to do. The only answer they have is no, because that's the best way they can express themselves in English. And I've seen people take this as rude before. They're like, uh, why did you say no to me out of nowhere? I didn't even ask in a rude way. It's not that they're being rude back. It's that that was the extent of their language. They knew the word no, so they use that. And I've seen this happen with them telling people about being overweight. They're like, oh, 
you are fat. Oh, you look very sickly overweight. And they're trying to express it in the best way they know how with the little bit of English that they know. And sometimes this can come across as extremely rude. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are just some Japanese out there who are rude enough to just straight out be like, hey, look, fatty. Um, and that's, it's uncalled for, but uh, again, it's not really frowned upon because they do see f being overweight as a sickness. For a Japanese person, what you and I would consider fat, um, it would have to be almost morbidly obese for a Japanese person. Even having a little bit of a belly is considered really fat for a Japanese person. And this is for multiple reasons. Um, when a Japanese person or an Asian person in general is even slightly overweight, there's a good chance they already have diabetes from that. The amount of weight that can affect their heart and their blood sugar level and all that different aspects of um, weight-related diseases is actually much lower than you or I as gaijin. Number one, because of body height, size, weight, um, and just our overall metabolisms, how we metabolize food, uh, how we metabolize sugar, it's really different. Um, there's a lot more going into it just than the very simple explanation I'm giving you, but for the most part, if you see someone who has even a small belly in Japan, there's a good chance they might already have diabetes, and that's why they're worried about you if you have a very large one or you're very much overweight or it's very noticeable on average sumo wrestlers who gain all that extra weight they don't live very long lives them getting into the ages of 50 and 60 is rare many times they die from heart disease they die from diabetes they die from being overweight and the strain it puts on their system because the Asian body just isn't made to handle that and when they see that happen to other people, they don't know. They don't know medical research. They don't know research on Gaijin enough to know that our bodies can actually physically handle a lot more weight, bigger bones, not necessarily saying bones that make you look fat. I'm just literally meaning like taller bones handle more weight. And that's a rarity in Japan. The average Japanese person, I think for a male is five foot five. I could be wrong, correct me if I am. So yeah, be, be ready for that. Um, I would say, yeah, definitely let your other employees know that there's, number one, uh, still a lot of sexual discrimination. Um, I've heard horrible intern stories before where uh, two different people would get an internship. The guy would be given actual work to do and the girl would be given papers to shred the entire time they were there. Like they're literally just told, go to the shredder and shred these papers. Well, wait, I've you know come here to do a study in my economics degree. Uh, we don't really have anything for you right now. Just go shred these papers. And that's all she ended up doing the whole time she was there because their company was run by these old 1950s sort of uh, socially unevolved men who couldn't get past the sexual discrimination their business had always had. And sadly in Japan, there's no government regulation against that. Yes, there is a department that supposedly handles it, they rarely ever do anything about it, especially when it comes to Gaijin because, let's be honest, we're out of this country pretty fast. Why would they follow up on it? Um, that's not a good excuse. That's bullshit. Um, they should. Uh, there's people who haven't gotten paid before. Now, I I'm telling about rare situation, guys. This is not something that happens all the time in Japan, but it does happen. So if this person's wondering about warnings or things that could go wrong, that's why I'm listing these things. I'm not trying to scare them. I'm just giving them a list of things that I've heard in the past happen or I've had experience with myself. So, yeah, give them a bit of a warning about that. There's still sexism in Japan. Uh, Japan socially is about where America was in the 1950s. Um, there's weight discrimination um, due to the fact that Japanese people see it as a sickness. Um, and what else? I guess, okay, one other thing I want to be very blunt about is there's not necessarily, a lot of people say Japan's xenophobic, as in they're afraid of other races and other cultures or aliens, which is Gaikokujin, you. Um, I wouldn't say it's so much xenophobia as not being educated uh, with other races. For example, I can't tell you how many European friends I've had where just because they're white, Japanese people assume they're American and speak English. Um, yeah, so obviously that's not always true. Uh, friends from Germany have complained to me about that. Um, you know, friends from Spain have complained to me about that. France. It's, it's a lack of education in multiple countries. Um, 
they have kind of like these movie-esque or Hollywood ideas of what other cultures are sometimes. And I think other countries are kind of guilty of this too. For example, thinking Asian people are awesome at math. Uh, for thinking Asian people are great at science. That we have robots living in Japan with us. Um, all these are false. So every country is kind of guilty of that. That's just how it's going to happen with Japan too. I hope all these answers have helped you somewhat. Um, the best I can tell you is figure out the law of the workplace, the harmony of the workplace, see how people operate. Some places operate more internationally if they've had experience with that. Some places operate very Japanese. And if they operate that way, study as much as you can about the tradition and culture of Japanese business and try to fit as much as you can. Don't bring tension, don't bring fights, don't bring complaints to the workplace because it'll just make your life harder in Japan. Sad but true. I hope those facts have helped you and your friends heading over here to be employed in Japan. Um, if I could say one extra tip of advice, it's that you have them watch the video too and anyone else you're bringing over with you. Until next time, I'm unrested with the questions you requested. This is JFAC, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Have a good